no real training and I can feel the difference, but, but I'm definitely underpowered. So challenging, man. Like I'm having a real hard time. I'm here in the mighty Forest of Dean to go for a bicycle ride. I'm going to attempt to Everest this hill. At only 108 meters elevation change per lap, I've got a long ride ahead of me. Now, what does that mean? Well, an Everest or Everesting is when you climb the equivalent height of Everest, 8,848 meters in one sitting. To do this, I'm going to do 82 laps that consist of a fire road climb and a technical downhill run. This is Average Joe's Revenge, part two, Return of the Medai, Ochre. So running over what I'm gonna be eating and wearing tomorrow, and it's kind of exciting you do just to look at it, get those butterflies in your stomach. In terms of what I'll be wearing, I'm just keeping it simple. I'm just going for just a t-shirt and some thin trail shorts. I've got a gilet there as well. I have got other spares, but that's what I'll be wearing in the morning at least. Controversially, I know I won't be wearing a chamois pad, but in my mind, chamois pads for three types of people. Road cyclists, which I'm not, wimps, which I'm not, and the well-endowed, and well, that's none of your business. In terms of food, I mean, it's predominantly Pringles and Oreos. It's kind of on a cylindrical theme, if you will. Um, a mixed bag of loads of stuff in there. We've got Coca-Cola, we've got crisps, and to me, it would be an absolute crime not to be able to say thank you very much and give a cheers to the guys behind the scenes making this video at the end. How well they go down for me personally after eating all this is yet to be decided, but that should hopefully be something I can look forward to. In terms of the bike, honestly, I don't have the gall to stand here in front of you now and say, oh, I needed to change this, then I need to change that. I'm running a bike that is, to my uh, preferences, it's a super fun bike to ride, but it's just how I think an all mountain or enduro bike should be. And I haven't really got into worrying about anything and I've changed nothing compared to my normal spec. But we're gonna do a bike check on that. So we're gonna go into the nitty gritty of that another time. Now it's just about, well, Diorios, Oreos, chocolate milk, and Coca-Cola by the looks of it. It's funny, I do get a little bit, it's the moment. It's like before getting into really cold water and you're like, is this what I actually enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> but nah, I'm all good. I can't wait, once, once you get going, it's all fine. But it's um, standing on the precipice a bit weird. And it's really weird as well having other people. Normally I go through this process by myself. And it's quite strange, you know, like going through that kind of, getting in that same mental space. You know, with you lo lovely fellas, it has to be said. But even so, it is quite peculiar. But yeah, we'll leave in five minutes and I'll be doing it before I know it, so it's all good. <laughs> it's only the only time I actually do white night riding is this now. It's the only time I've done night riding in a couple of years. <sighs> Let's do it. Nothing like doing it. Ooh. Into the night. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. My phone's going off. It's my alarm, it's the BBC. That's my normal super early morning alarm that I listen to for like three hours before getting up. Good. It's super grippy in some places, uh, super <laughs> greasy in others. Um, body feels okay. Yeah, just gonna tick through. That's the cool thing about starting in the dark though, is by the time it's light, you know, three hours later, you're already done. You feel like you've got that for free? Yeah. And like that's like such a cool feeling for me. I think the beauty of Everesting was just getting on your bike, 
finding a hill and surrendering to the madness, the pain, the mental boredom and the difficulty you will run into. It was about humans expressing themselves on the thing they loved in a place that they would remember forever. I thought there was something so sincere about that expression, something that was so unpretentious, humble even. It reminded me of the person that I'd quite like to be and of the attributes that I'd quite like to call my own. Feeling pretty good, but I'm definitely underpowered. Um, like I've kind of done lots of riding and really enjoyed my riding before this, but no real training and I can feel the difference, but, but I just feel like a crap car with too many people. That's the only way I can describe it. Okay, now nobody told Doddy this, but I'm actually a bit saddle sore some grit got in there pretty early on. But it's all right, there's only 15 hours to go or something. I do just feel underpowered. And I don't, it's just so bizarre. Oh. Ah, -hoo! How are you doing, Tom? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good. Do you have a little nap? Yeah. Nice. Oh, man. Because my hip is so bad. After all, my saddle really low. I mean, I had this bike for like three rides. I think I might have just gone a little bit to the extreme. I'm gonna go up, see how she goes. I feel like garbage. And I don't really know why. I've been smashing these electrolyte drinks, which might just be the makings of very expensive urine, I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, tastes pretty good. Hopefully, I'll start feeling a little bit better. I saw a video of a group of guys on their own Everest mission, with mountain bike gearing on their 10k road bikes, riding a specifically chosen climb. They clearly felt entitled to that achievement, trying to ally themselves to qualities that, I for one, deeply admire. But in doing so, they're holding too tight and crippling that wonderful thing. This isn't a race. This is just for the respect of yourself and that of your peers. Please don't twist my arm for my respect. It's not going to happen. Leave it up on that top shelf where it deserves to be, right next to the marmalade. Besides, the longer the odds, then the greater the glory. Oreo's in, and that is actually 2,950. So <laughs> a third of the way, and it's really important here for me anyway, not to get kind of too self-congratulatory and almost too bristic here, because this next gap between a third and a half is a long one. So this next one and a half thousand meters is gonna be really important. And then, uh, yeah, just, then I'm out as far as I'll be at sea. Just gotta get back home. So that's gonna be nice. This is so physical. My elbows, tennis elbows are really like poor thing to complain about. But oh my God. So I'm trying to just like get my knuckle in them. Yeah, just there's so much front wheel compression. Oh yeah, sweet, yeah, let's do that next lap. I actually got an old injury on this elbow as well, funnily. And um, I'm just losing all grip strength, which means my hand's vibrating on the bar and then it's making it worse. And it's just got like very painful. Um, but also the problem is the pain hits you under real high compression and your hand just wants to like, it almost wants to spasm and let go. But obviously you're just like death gripping on. Not, not the brake so much, it's just in like in the palm of my hand. And I've got this little... As long as you can still pull the brake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got this little ridge in my glove. Yeah. And it's like, was like feeding on it as well. It's like super painful. You know I was saying music's a blanket. Mm. I've been swaddling that blanket these last few hours. Oh my God. Right. Cheers guys.
lap 61 all done and dusted, 6,670. If you would like to go and give it the beans on your bike for 17 plus hours then, you know what? Fair play. Good on you. You have my support, you crazy animal, but please don't take pride in doing something difficult by making it easy. It will be the end of something that should be regarded as sacred. I've done a few of these before, around Queenstown, and I really believe you should do it on a hill that you feel you have a deep personal connection with. It's not about finding a mountain that's already Everest sized, but transforming your local hill into Everest. This small hill in the southwest of England, by the time I'm done with it, it will be the highest point on Mother Earth. It's so challenging, man. Like I'm having a real hard time. Combination of fatigue, the tracks we're riding as well, like they're not crazy steep, but there's plenty of places to lose your front wheel, to clip a pedal, to, like they're pretty treacherous in a way, although they're not necessarily that steep. So I say that, I think if a lot of people rode it, they'd be surprised that someone rode this 82 times. Um, but I just haven't done yet, so I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry it's so late. I think it's gonna be like a one o'clock job. Sorry lads. It's a job, I think. <laughs> yeah, but even so. Now, here's the reasons why I cannot do it. The loop is only 108 meters of elevation, so that would be 82 laps, and that is obviously too many. I haven't trained properly. I've ridden a reasonable amount, but nothing crazy and no specified training. I've got a gammy hip. I'm riding a long travel, 160 mil bike with proper tires. I'm clearly not a climber and I'm riding flat pedals. But now we've got that out of the way. Why am I going to do it? Well, I'm tougher than boot curry. I'm more positive than a kid's TV presenter with their finger in the mains. More reliable than Samwise Gamgee with that posh elvish bread. What I'm saying is, I stand here ready for whatever is coming my way. So after this lap, it's just the 10 to go. That's pretty cool. Probably even cooler is getting down into single figures. And it's just like nine, eight, seven, Try not to get freaked out by the fact there's still 10 laps. I'm actually quite happy. Body feels all right. I mean, that's to be expected. The knee's starting to hurt a bit now. But it means I can't feel my elbow, which is great. Yo. I want it, desperately badly. My riding is where I express myself and it's who I truly am. You couldn't ever really know me as a person without seeing me in that 11th hour. My nose seemingly glued to my stem and my eyes casting through my brow as I keep my gaze fixed upon the horizon. This stuff is what excites me. If I wasn't, there wouldn't be any point. I'm nervous whilst confident, but if you're not scared at least a little, you're not doing the good stuff and I promise you that. Bicycles, my friends, the only chain that will set you free. Hey yo. It's really annoying because on this, it says I'm gonna hit it in three laps, but then if I trust it, like to be that accurate. Mm. But yeah, I'm just gonna crack on. I'm gonna do four laps. No messing about. That's only one hour. Last lap, I'm just going to go straight on. Yeah! The last time I got a go up this bloody climb. 
I've been talking about this for so long, this bloody Everest. Whoever's editing this, I'm sorry for just leaving the camera on. I'm having a simply lovely time. Yeah! Fucking yes! Oh my god, I can't believe it! I did it, I didn't bloody die on any of it! Ah, 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 ah. Oh my god. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh my god. That, honestly, like I once ate 36 petty flu in one sitting. I know a challenge. But that, that was like nothing else. That was the most physical day in every regard I've ever had on a bike. There was, when my hand was bad, I thought, to be honest, I sound so stupid. I'd have tried to buy some handle tape if I was by myself. And then I was just gonna duct tape it to the bar. Yeah. And I was thinking, this is gonna, this is gonna suck. You know? Yeah. And um, once it got past, you know, the, the, the elbow thing, I thought, we wanted a winner here. There were some times where perhaps, you know, I went through a real bad spot with nutrition for no real reason. I think sometimes your body just takes a while to adapt the way it wants to be. And uh, I was having a horrid time, eh? I was having a really nasty time. And I just can't believe it. That was so gnarly. I can't believe it, man. Oh my God. Oh my God, let's get you got to get some beers there, boys. Yes. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I am so grateful. Thank you, you very much. You nailed it, actually. Killed it. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Thank you so much. Like, honestly, well, that has well, meant well. the world to me. Oh. You know, it's funny. A wiser person than myself would probably have prepared better. Wiser still, and they probably wouldn't have trash-talked so much beforehand. It's gonna be a right laugh, I would tell my bewildered colleagues. This wasn't just a needless indulgence of bravado and watered down brawn, but rather a way to assert myself upon this challenge. This was my way to say to the ride, you can't hurt me. And if you try, well, bring the kitchen sink because I'm gonna be able to stomach it. To be honest, this is kind of the extent of the reaches of my personality. What you see before you is what I am. This is kind of it, just a man-shaped boy with an enjoyment of riding bicycles in the outdoors. It's that soft, gooey mess of nostalgia and sentiment that I was protecting. That attitude, although perhaps churlish, gave my morale and my resolve a much needed leg up. Standing here now, after doing it, well, that delayed satisfaction really did distill throughout the whole day and, upon reflection, is really precious to me. 82 laps. I just can't quite believe it. Well, that's it, guys. Now, honestly, if you don't think all this toil and tribulations is worth one like, a little bit of a subscribe and hitting that no notification bell, well, God help you. I am so tired, I can't really think of content to suggest. I might make stuff up. If you want to see my collection of porcelain Vinnie Jones dolls, click down here. Um, and, oh, the bike. If you want to see my bike check, click down there. Both such beautiful options, wowee. You're in for a treat of the aesthetic kind. But yeah, hang tight, thank you very much.